the first half of this season, we're taking you deep into South Australia to sample some of the best coastline, scenery and four-wheel driving this country has to offer. We're exploring the Eyre Peninsula and it's one of our biggest trips yet. We've come down to the Eyre Peninsula. Finally we made it. After about two years and being postponed five times, we get across the border and into this beautiful part of the country. I've never been here before, so I'm really excited to start exploring. We came around this corner and it just opened right up. The terrain's been magnificent along the coastline, up dunes, down dunes. Sensational outlook, amazing scenery. Best beach driving you'll ever do in Australia. The boat was being tossed around like a toy. The adrenaline levels, once you saw that, just rose. It certainly hasn't disappointed. If you love your seafood, this is the place to be. The people, the hospitality, more than anything, just the scenery. Two weeks, but still too short. Where else would you want to be? An absolutely epic trip up there with the best. All keen and ready to start another adventure, the crew met up at Templetonia Lookout, gazing over their playground for the day, the Coffin Bay National Park. With an action packed 10 days ahead of them, not even the grey skies could dampen their spirits. G'day everyone, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to your 4x4. This week we're heading to South Australia where we've got a 10 day trip along the Air Peninsula plan. For this trip I've bought two important accessories. Number one is my wife Shu Min, she'll definitely be keeping me on track. And number two is the big Iveco which is fully kitted out for this sort of long distance remote touring. Andreas and Lisa, great to have you along for another trip. Yeah, it's really great to be here Simon after so many attempts to get onto the Air Peninsula that we finally made it. After about two years and being postponed five times, we finally get our much anticipated visit to the Air Peninsula in South Australia. Jeff, you've come the furthest. How was your trip down? It was about 2,700 k's to come down, but really looking forward to what we're going to see here. I've never been to the Air Peninsula before. Just driving into the area it was just magnificent. Young Sarah from our marketing partners joined me for this trip. Did a little bit of driving on the way down and I'm hoping to do some today as well. Much different trip than I've been on before, so I can't wait to see what else is around. Once we got off the bitumen, we stopped on the sand at the start, aired down the tyres and dropped it down to around 18 psi. Unfortunately, the weather turned a little bit sour on us and it started to drizzle at that time, which wasn't great, but we just made the most of it, got it done quickly and then headed out onto the tracks. A little bit of cloud, a few showers flowing through, but nice and warm inside the car. It's freezing outside. <laughs> Today we're in the Coffin Bay National Park and we're extremely lucky to have a local lunch to help us out. Morning Steve and Adam, great to have you guys along today. It's great to be here, it's an excellent day for an adventure. Now where are you taking us today? Today we're going to have a leisurely drive, we're going to head out to Sir Isaac's, going through Black Springs, Seven Mile Beach, down to Sensations. You'll see some sandy beaches, a few sand dunes, a little bit of rocky terrain, and with this rain, possibly a bit of mud. We followed the beach for a little while, and then it came to some tighter single trail tracks. We came to this area with lots of water puddles, and they looked not too bad. Just coming to Lake Jesse and the track splits. You've got a dry side and a wet side, but the wet side is just too pretty. Firm on the base, beautiful hard pack sand. So I watched Simon hit the water and he hit it pretty hard. Through like the third puddle, it was quite deep. And I thought if he's going through there, I'm not going through there. Oh, that one's a little deeper. Grant, what's that one just before the outlet? She's a little deeper. Yeah, that got me a, a little bit nervous back 
I was also wondering how Grant was going to get fueled as well because from the high lux, obviously you've got a ground clearance and a little bit lower vehicle as well. I thought I'd give it a crack. Very firm, no real problems at all, a bit of water. So the rest of us, we saw what happened to Simon. We chickened right out. It's very good to know there is the option for the hardcore four-wheel driver and there is the option to go the other way around. Once we finished the first little section, we then headed up the first little real dune. It can be very compact, very firm. It was a little bit bumpy. Bumpier than I'm used to, and more than what I was expecting. You've got the undulations up and down. I sort of hit that with a bit of pace, which was exciting. There's also the corrugations in the road. We just slow the vehicle down a little bit to conquer them pretty comfortably. And the Raptor's got good suspension anyway with the Fox shock, so it's set up quite well to handle that terrain. It's just opened up here onto the edge of a beautiful beach. Looks awesome. Wow. We were right beside the coastline and it was so picturesque to look out. And a couple of big downhills, as you come over, you could see the bay out in front of you. It was absolutely stunning. Looking right across to those mountains there gives you a really good indication of how different the terrain is, how stark the contrast in the scenery are. We had beautiful coffin bar on the right. Clouds were clearing, sun was coming out. We didn't get to see much of the ocean. That's more across to the left over the dunes. Being a national park, not really allowed to drive in those, so we stuck to the track. And as we drove, the views just got better and better. Andreas and Lisa, how's the scenery so far for you both? It's really a new experience. I dare say we'll see plenty of wildlife along the way. What are you going to do if you see an emu? Jumping out and trying to film it. Coming from Germany, that's something very special for us, especially for me. I love animals. And the, the sand dunes here and also the vegetation on the sand, unbelievable. Yeah, I just drove past a tree. On the beach side, yeah, it's usually just shrubbery. In Queensland, unfortunately, we don't have much vegetation on the dunes and that's where we get the erosion. Ironed out and went through to a bit more of a rock, sandy type terrain. Here we go. These bouncy sand tracks, you just got to take it nice and easy. You don't want to go too hard, it just chops them up even more. Jeez. Yeah, once you start bouncing, you do just chew them out. When you're towing a trailer down through here, sometimes it's a bit unavoidable. Once we hit the tracks, it was different. A lot of rocky sections, a few inclines, some solid rock patches, some good for a bit of variation in terms of driving. Just watching some of the wildlife around us, there's emus running everywhere, so you have to have your wits about you and make sure that they don't go in front of the car. Ryan, this is your first year 4x4 trip, I think. It certainly is, mate, and I'm very, very excited to be here. It's been a steep learning curve for me, being an on-road person more so than an off-road person, but yeah, having an absolute blast. It's just good to have a crew behind you with all the experience to help you out and even just following their line. What have you heard about your 4x4 and what are you expecting? Travelling all different tracks, all different terrains, great bunch of people, just having fun. You're right there, great bunch of people, starting with the host of course. Goes without saying, doesn't it? <laughs> This here is looking like a whole nother world. Goes from the sand to the hard stuff, back to the sand, a bit of clay, it's all good. The park has done a lot of work to this track. There used to be a lot of ponies out through this park, the Coffin Bay ponies, and they decided they were doing too much damage to the vegetation and decided to pull them out. So to get them out, they had to upgrade this track to be able to bring the trackers and the trailers down to pull the horses out. They are around the, at our Monta Lodge now so that they could live their life undisturbed.
This park, it covers all bases for people. You've got your rock, your soft sand, your hard sand, your bumpy sand and your mud. Let's say a nice experience and a good start of the journey. So driving along this rugged vegetation, there was so much wildlife, lots of kangaroos passing. I had some emus running about the place, so got to be careful of those little suckers. Unfortunately, we didn't see any sand goannas. They are a little bit harder to spot around here, but plenty of wildlife to keep people entertained. Hey Steve, it's getting around that time of day. Where do you reckon a good spot is for lunch? Seven Mile Beach is always a good spot to stop and lunch. There's plenty of room, nice flat sand. It's a top spot, good view. And how long do you reckon we've got till we get there? I'd call about half an hour, I reckon, at a nice cruisy pace like this. All right, sounds good. That's what we're aiming for, thank you. Lunch in around half an hour, convoy. Nobody get bogged. Bit steep down through this section, guys. A few wombat holes at the bottom. They've obviously had some troubles there with the sand. So they've laid some rubber in there to try and stabilise it a bit, but yeah, it's a ripper downhill descent. That area is known as Axel Hill. Back in the old days, when you try to come up that hill because it's a tight bend, you're always renowned for snapping axles. Yeah, ripper spot, all right. Oh wow, we just hit the beach. Unbelievable, this looks awesome. Yeehaw, that bloody does look good. Wow, and we're so close to the water. Go for dip. There you No. We're right on the beach, ladies and gentlemen. Once we got down onto the beach, wow. You know, you wouldn't believe where you were. Have a look at that, it's just beautiful. Yeah, absolutely stunning. You start to get a glimpse of the ocean and then you come around the last bend and bang, you're on that beach. And from that beach, that view is fantastic. All right, can we turn off all the cars and just enjoy that water? That's just so peaceful. Sure is. No better sound, I don't think. This magnificent vista, it's just you can see the beach on either end just stretches for miles and miles. Crystal clear water, beautiful clear beach sand and not a vehicle in sight, which is really great. Now it's not just feeding ourselves when we're out here, we've got to feed the crew. So the Mike Coleman fridges, the Clearview fridge lights, and the Clearview protectors really combine to make my job a lot easier when I've got to whack together six, seven, eight, nine, ten sandwiches and keep the adventure rolling. So guys, invest in a good quality fridge and go for a good quality fridge light that allows you to access and really get the most out of your fridge. Yeah, after the lunch break, we then continued on the beach. Quite a nice ride there, and I must say, I always thought as a Queenslander, nothing beats Fraser Island, but this was really quite spectacular. And I was really excited because I've never done any beach or sand driving before. Here we go, first obstacle for Sarah. On the beach. Follow his lines. Don't talk to me like a five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I hear you're in the passenger seat, take it nice and easy. I am, I'm sitting back relaxing, she's doing a wonderful job. And the train has been very different to what I've been used to up in Brizzy. Uh, Brizzy it's a lot of dirt and mud, that sort of thing, but being the sand, it's been great to have a different experience. Looking out to the right here, honestly, with those islands out there, it's a little bit like the wet Sundays, except the temperature, obviously. Those cliffs you can see way, way out there, that's where they film the movie Gallipoli. Oh, really? Oh, wow, well, well, that's a bit of a fun fact. Yes, yeah, Steve, our illustrious guide, was telling me that. Looks like a bit of a whale bone up ahead, Steve. Yeah, about 12 months ago, large whale washed up, and this is about all that's left off it. Wow. That's the lower jaw, I think, isn't it? I think so. Wow. Holy dooly. Yeah, that's massive. Have a look at that. Just awesome to see. Oh, wow. Used to be. Never seen anything like that. That's that's amazing. And that whale bone, if you tipped it up, it would make an excellent Viking throne. <laughs> Are we going in convoy or one at a time, Simon? 
Oh, we're going to get up as much speed as we can, so everyone go, go wherever you want. Left keep dead. Cameraman's running. So we come around and when we see the dunes, Simon's trying to get us as close as we can, but of course, being a national park, we can't drive up on them. We all jumped out and just stood back, had a look around, took some photos, and God, the dunes were so massive. The cars just look tiny in comparison. So it was quite a sight to be seen and I would not be able to see that in Brisbane. Getting a little bit tight through here, guys. Not a lot of room, come through. We'll have a look, see what it looks like. Yeah, you probably just have to remember about the high tide coming. It's still not here yet, so we'd hate to get stuck on this side, Simon. Yeah, I reckon we better pull up here and have a bit of a look. Let's go have a look. It's been an awesome day driving, exploring the Coffin Bay National Park. Have a look at this, just absolutely stunning. You'd be in the Bahamas, you could be anywhere. But have a look at this. The weather turned out to be a really magnificent day and one of the places we stopped, uh, Jeff and I decided to get our rods out, get the line wet and see if we could uh, catch some dinner. So at this stage, Grant from Piranha has lost three lures. Jeff's already onto his second lure, but still reckons there's a chance he can catch something. I don't reckon we've got any hope, but they're giving it a crack, so we'll give them a couple more minutes, see how we go. Jeff and Grant, they tried. Best of luck when they tried, but unfortunately, Jeff didn't catch us dinner, so I'm not sure what we're eating tonight. I hope he's got a second plan, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I think there's a bit too much water mixed with them at the moment, but it's only day one of 10, so we intend to catch a fish on this trip. Yeah, that's not looking real safe. We've got dunes coming down nice and steep. We've got water lapping into the wheel tracks. And beyond that, not a lot of beach left. So it's coming in really close to high tide. I reckon it might be time that we, we turn around and head out. The tide has already come in over our wheel tracks. It's coming up pretty quick, actually. It's time that we hightailed it out of here. All right, convoy, let's get ourselves out of here. That water's coming in quick. Almost there, almost there. So we really thought it was the right time to go because as we drove off, we could see that the rising tide was already sweeping onto our tire tracks. So it was time to leave and get back to our camp. This route is used by a lot of surfers. It's apparently a very good surf spot at the end, which probably a secret spot. The Transit 3 has fairly straightforward. There are one or two tricky areas. One of them, we came through this narrow section, a sort of sand dunes on the side, sort of very firm sort of cliffs before we got to the top of the crest and there's a very steep decline. Here we have Axle Hill, they call it. We can break axles, so we're in low range, ready to lock on, and take it steady and see here we go. Sensibly, they put down some rubber matting on that sort of section of the track just to make sure that it doesn't actually get too degraded. This will be your first big hill, see? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> Doing skiddies. Our first day was just amazing. Headed straight for Coffin Bay and the National Park. Hitting the tracks down to the bays, the beaches and everything was just sensational. Well, it's been a ripper start to our Air Peninsula adventure. Make sure you're watching next week when we feature the stunning El Monte Park Lodge, catch up with the local Trek Hardware 4x4 team and take in more of the incredible South Australian coastline. Definitely off. Mm. Just cold. <laughs>